Three. My name is Landry Mutombo. I run Inspire Recruitment Solutions as well as Verify Me Technologies, two companies that are in the human resources space. Once again, Bob, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Now, I was asked to speak around talent management, but I think there's a view to scaling businesses. And the reason I think Bob has asked me is because we've seen exponential growth in the last two years in our business in the midst of COVID. And we are still growing. In fact, this financial year, we're going to double last year's revenue. We've already maxed last year's revenue. We've reached it, and we're halfway through our financial year. So that's, that, that's, that, that calls for a round of applause. Yeah. understand that I, there is a reason I'm here but I'm not an academic I when I left school I went straight to working I'm a very practical hands-on person so everything I'm going to speak to you about today is based on my personal experiences in business I'm full-time in my business that is where I earn I do it over 12 well, 12 people and we're looking to increase that number soon so there is something in what I have to say today if you're prepared to listen. Uh, Bob asked me to give some material. I didn't bring any material, but I want to put it out there that anyone in the room who wants to spend some time with me, you are welcome to come to my office. I will give you an hour, two hours of my time to discuss your venture, whatever it is you're looking to start or to, to grow, and I will give you my practical experience. Not, uh, you know, uh, book knowledge, just what I've experienced over time. Okay, let me move forward here. I don't have a... All right, cool. I'm quickly, what we're gonna talk about is around business essential tools I think you need. And just on that, who in here is full-time in business um, besides the guys that have spoken, the guys that haven't spoken, who is full-time in their business? We're looking to get into business full-time. Can I see a show of hand? Okay, cool. But then we'll talk about the talent balance. I'm in the recruitment space, so people is what I do. Sales versus delivery, whether or not you should, you know, you, how much selling versus delivering of what you're selling, who you should partner with, whether to consolidate your business or expand it, and building a sustainable business. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna run through it, guys. Okay, first things first, what do you need? Guys, those that are not brave must stay in their jobs. First disclaimer, if you are not brave, you stay in your job. I've met the most incredibly smart, competent people, but they're working somewhere. And I've met people that have got no basic education, that are running multi-million dollar companies, and that employ people that come fresh out of school, that are more capable than men. Why? Because they have heart. You need heart in business. If, you're, if, if you don't have the bravery to get in there, stay out of it. Get your head right. I, I think some of the speakers spoke about this. You've got to be in the right frame of mind to be in business. It's almost as if you are, you, you're a little bit crazy. You're a little bit nuts. I promise you I've grade very much in the last two years. I'm actually very, you know, my hair is really black. This is just the last two years, right? It's like madness being in business. It's going to stretch you. You're going to find challenges you haven't even thought about now. They're going to hit you, right? I've experienced things I didn't think would even come my way. You've got to keep learning. Somebody said it earlier that, um, you know, your ability to grow yourself will directly impact on your business and I'm going to get there. Manage expectations, you're not going to reach the targets that you set all the time. You may exceed it, you may miss it, but you've got to manage your own expectation. Use what you have, start where you are. No, guys, you don't always need a loan from the bank. I got turned away from the banks a thousand. In fact, if I go to the bank today, they'll tell me they don't want to borrow any money. But we're going to turn over nearly 10 million rand for the financial year. And I will still not go to a bank, right? Because I hustle. You've got to hustle. There are ways, there are people around you that will support you. 
There are resources you have access to that you don't even think about. Remember, being in business, don't knock on the doors of banks. I'm looking forward to the day the banks come to me and say, hey, can we borrow your money so I can say to them, you remember when I was struggling? And I wanted to say to Armel, you guys are all about the numbers, the presentations. That's not how business always works. Business is a matter of the heart. There's not always science behind it. And sometimes the bankers don't understand that. You show them something, I've been building an app that I've bootstrapped from the start, it's cost me a ton of money, nobody wants to fund it. Do I believe in it? Yes, I do. And it will succeed, right? So you don't always need, and I, and I partnered with a Congolese developer. I found him on LinkedIn, I said to him, I have an app I need you to build for me. And I said to him, let's, let's meet up. And I said, I have no money to pay you. But let's sign an agreement you will own 30% of the shares of this business. We have not really made any money. It's three years later. He's still committed to the, to, to the project. But I have somebody who's built it for me. The app is in stores. You can find it and download it. It operates today. Verify right. me. It's called Verify Me. That's right. So the point I'm making is you do not always need to knock on doors. The resources sometimes are there for you. And I've said before, if you have the heart and you, you want to be in business, if you step off that ledge and you go for it, somebody said it earlier, the universe will conspire to give you success. And I've seen that happen. Are you selling yet? If you are in business, you are in sales. Finish and clap. If you do not want to sell, you can develop the most beautiful product. If nobody is buying it, you're not in business, right? So you need to remember that. And you must always be selling. In my company, of the 12 people that work there, 12 of them are salespeople, including me. Everyone sells in my business. We don't have any passengers. The phone rings on everyone's extension, everybody answers. We are all selling. We are chasing deals all the time. There isn't somebody that was more important than others. I'm the salesperson, right? I chase deals all the time. It's something that I love doing. So in your business, remember that. Always be selling and closing. Can we go to the next slide, please, sir? Right. Now, in startup, you can't always do it yourself. And the doctor was speaking about partnerships earlier, right? Uh, people are everything, not just in business. And I'm not going to die. I'm not going to go too far away from this. But even in human resources management, for those of you who, who studied that in business, they tell you that your competitive advantage comes from your people, because your people can learn, they can adapt, they can create products that will give you that competitive advantage ahead of your clients. So. Uh, sorry, ahead of your competitors. You can't always do, do it yourself. But can you get a volunteer? True story. I had a lady, a fr my mom's friend's friend came to see me for a job. An older gentleman was looking for a job, and I'm in the recruitment space. A lot of people come to see me. And I sat with him, and I couldn't help him. And he said to me, I'm going to send you my daughter's CV. Sent me his daughter's CV. A day later, I called her, and I interviewed her and I couldn't afford to pay her. And she said to me, it's fine. I've got law qualifications. I'll come and work in your office. I'll do filing. I'll do anything. I just want to work. She's the highest earning person in my office today. And the biggest competitive advantage I have is her. But she started out two weeks, three weeks. I said to her, I couldn't pay. She volunteered. Right? Um, now, some hires, you're going to get it wrong, and you've got to be okay with that. I'm okay with that now. I struggled with it at first. Because when your business is small and you bring somebody in, even as a volunteer, and you get it wrong, and their energy is wrong, and they throw your business off its course, you can take it personally. Especially in a small business, you start feeling like, I, I messed up here. But you've got to accept you're going to get it wrong. The only thing is, you've got to change it quickly and move on to the next one when somebody uh, is the wrong fit. And I know essay uh, laws are tough when it comes to um, hiring and, and especially dismissing people. But if you're having problems, call me. I will help you fire someone. Okay? <laughs> I won't even charge you. Okay? <laughs> Compliment your skill. Now, I'm a salesperson, so my business is very sales heavy. And I've had to bring in people to help complement my sales ability. So the balance of the people in my, in my team are more delivery people than sales. And you need to find that balance. Don't get too many people who are like you. And yes, are you selling yet? You've got to be selling and closing all the time. Can we go on to the next one? 
I'm quickly shifting to the, to the growth phase. Now, this is where we are at the moment. Um, like I said, we, we're doubling our revenue from, from last year. I'm very confident we're going to make those numbers. And I'm confident we're going to double it again. We've gone to a much bigger office space. We have really good people in. But this is critical, guys. You marry your business. In a small business, the business itself is usually a reflection of the entrepreneur. In my business, I went through a year, two years of struggles, nearly closing, and then I changed some things about me, up here, in here, and my business started to transform. So you have to grow yourself first, because the challenges you're gonna face in your business in the future are gonna be dependent on whether you can resolve them. And right now, I, have a, I actually have a difficult situation with a staff member that, I've, that has been with me in fact, she worked with me even at my previous employer, and I would consider her a friend, and I'm about to dismiss her. Right? This is a challenge on my character. How tough can I be as a business person? How committed am I to my own success that I would be prepared to get rid of somebody I've worked with closely for nearly 10 years? But that's a demand on me. My business is asking me, are you growing? Are you tough enough? You can make really tough decisions when, when, when the time comes. And if I fall, it affects my business because I can stop performing. Right now, so initially we got volunteers, we got juniors, we got guys fresh out of school. You can get these people. There are some really qualified people. That will help you in the initial stages. When you're growing your business, you cannot skim on talent. You simply cannot. The exponential growth we've seen in our business is because we've raised the bar of the people we're hiring. And it's very counterintuitive because you're looking at your money and you're saying, can I afford to pay this person 25,000 rand a month? I'm not even sure if three months down the line I'm gonna be able to pay this person. That's the first thing you think of as a business person. But I can tell you you have to resist that urge because it's through changing your own mentality about what's possible putting the expectation on a really expensive resource and saying, you come into my business and I have the expectation you're gonna deliver. Everybody around you noticing that you are lifting the bar and it's gonna to continue to expand what you're doing. The only way you expand your business is through people. A loan from the bank's only gonna help you so much. There's only so much marketing you can do. People will come in and they will grow your business. Don't skim, add growth facts. On, on the people. However, when they do come in, they're, they're gonna ask you, where are we going? There has to be trust in the leader of the organization that when they come in, they know where we're going. Do we have the tools to do our job? This has been really tough for me. And when I said to you guys, at this point I changed some things about me, some of this was just systems. Getting basic systems in place, getting structure in the business, um, having certain expectations. Now we set a bar here. Anyone that comes in has to get their level up. If they don't, they go out. Right? Like hopefully they raise the bar even more. Right? Do we have the tools? And then obviously I just mentioned that. Make sure your systems hold. And are you selling yet? You've got to sell and close. A lot of people look down on sales actually in the market. I love it. And in business you are selling all the time. Can we go to the next one? Right, sales versus delivery. Now in our, in our business, and I'm sure in your business as well, you're selling a service, then you have to deliver on, on that service. And in a small business, it can be tricky. I don't know how you guys do it, but when my business was small, so I would go out and I would find clients, and they would say to me, we have recruitment needs. I would need somebody to deliver on that project. And what can, what can happen is you go out and sell, especially if you're a one-man operation, you go sell, you deliver, you get paid. So you have this wave, right? No revenue, you get paid, but you spend so much time delivering and not selling that your sales cycle is dropped again. You've got to avoid that. And that, if you're sales focused and you have somebody who's delivery focused can help you to have a steady line, right? And be consistent. If you can't do it, leave it. In the beginning, I used to take on any job I could. And you guys know, you take on a job, you can't deliver on it, your reputation is done, right? So if you can't take on a job because you don't have um, you know, the, the capability to do it, 
rather not sell something you can't get. And that's another thing that's changed. The more I have systems and people in my business that I can rely on, that I can trust to sell, I can sell that, that I can trust to deliver rather, I can sell more aggressively. Because I'm selling my team back in the office. And I can say to any company, I have the best team. You can give me this project, my team will deliver. Right? Value comes from delivery. Guys, and I think I said this, and Bob and I speak about it all the time. Sometimes we try to complicate what we're trying to do. We try to find this fancy solution to the world's problems. But value comes from delivery. If you're solving a client's problem, they will pay you for it. You deliver on that, on that they will pay you for it. This is one of my favorite books. I read it a, a couple of times a year. It's very, very practical in terms of the world of South African business, right? 90 rules. And because I, you know, I don't always have the time, it's broken up into chapters that you can read easily. And the guy says in there that everyone's trying to figure out the next best thing, you know, the next best app. But he says, I'm in the construction industry and I still haven't found a reliable plumber. He says, if you can start a plumbing business, put it on Google, have a reliable employee to do the job, you're going to make money. You don't need to come up with, to reinvent the wheel, right? So that, it would help if you did. Like us, we're in recruitment. There are 50,000 recruitment agencies, right? We have a lot of competitors. Companies recruit on their own. We still make money, right? Because we give good service and there's value in it and clients are coming after that value. I'm sounding like a broken record about selling and closing Mr. D there. Right, partnerships. I heard some guys speak about it. Now also initially we did this where we're in recruitment, there's another company in recruitment, can we partner up or, or, or have an external party deliver? I think the doctor you mentioned that as well. You gotta find people on a similar mission, first of all. Some people can derail you. I had I have personal experience with that. Right? If you're going to partner with somebody, make sure you're on the same, same mission. And not everyone will add value, yes. Um, and what I don't like about partnership is losing control. I'm very controlling. And even, I think it was Armel and my sister over there that was talking about when they invest, they take some shareholding. I'm very much a control freak. I want to dictate everything and where everything goes, I don't want to be told, right? So partnerships, if you're going to go that route, you gotta give up some control of where things are going and you, you've gotta adapt where need be. Moving quickly is simply that if a partnership or anything isn't working, you know what we tend to do is we try to be nice to people and we wanna work. No, if it's not working, we'll the act today. Cut the relationship, cut your losses, move on to the next one. Okay? And be ruthless, especially in partnerships, because if a supplier, if a a contractor, somebody isn't delivering what they need, that's where the heart comes in. You've got to be tough enough to say, oh, that's it, I'm willing to act, I'm canning you, let's move on to the next one. Right, consolidate or expand, I know I'm moving fast. Um, I, so, so there are trends in business, and some people will tell you, okay, in your industry you've got to look at the trends, and it's important. 